Hey, welcome to Too Many Gadgets. So today we are changing my bathroom to having Philips smart lights instead of my all regular dumb lights. So we are installing the GO10 uh, white edition and one of the dimming switches to control them. I have smart bulbs in pretty much my entire house with the exception of the two bathrooms in our house and those are sort of now the time for also getting them joined into the smart home era and uh, what I've went with uh, for the, my two bathrooms is the Philips Hue GO10 white edition. Uh, it's fairly affordable, I have a lot of Philips stuff in uh, from before with the E27 and also a couple of light strips. I also have IKEA Trollfri and a couple of Xiaomi light strips and I tend to, even though uh, there are a wide selection of brands to choose from today, I do tend to buy from these three, three brands that I just mentioned just to keep my life a little bit more simple. Even though, you know, Zigbee will allow you to choose a lot of other brands also, it's, it's just easier, you know, if you stick with a couple of brands and, and those are the three that I'm going with. Let's start out with the installation so you can hopefully see that this is pretty simple and something that you can do yourself. So the first thing I'm doing is removing power to the part of the house where my bathroom is. And the reason for that is I need to remove this old physical dimmer switch that I need to replace with the Philips Hue dimming switch. Once I've removed the switch, I will connect the two wires on a more permanent basis to make sure that the bulbs will have constant power. And to test that out, we will turn the power back on to that section of the house and just verify that the bulbs are working. These are the old bulbs, but again, just to test that this constant power thing works. Okay, time to unbox the new bulbs and let's get start with installing them. You first need to remove this small metal ring that makes sure you have access to the bulb. You remove the old bulb by holding the socket and turning the bulb counterclockwise. We can now insert the new bulb by aligning these two connectors with the socket. Now we can push the bulb back up into the housing and then put the metal ring back on to make sure that the bulb is sitting nice and securely. We pretty much repeat that process for the remaining six bulbs in my bathroom and it's fairly easy to do so. It takes about a minute per bulb. Again, back on with the power to test that the new bulbs are working and they are. So into the Philips Hue app and we'll need to start a search for new bulbs. And you'll see that the bulbs are starting to show up and because I have a connection to Amazon Alexa you can also see in the top that they are being added automatically to the Alexa universe. When you select the bulb on the list you will notice that it sort of dims ever so slightly so you'll be able to tell which bulb is which when you name them. So the easiest way of doing this when you have multiple bulbs is just to name the first one, copy the text and then paste it onto the remaining bulbs, just changing the number. Now we need to create a room so that these bulbs are grouped together. And then we select the bulbs that are included in this room.
Now we can test the group out by turning the dial here. That works. And we can also try to decrease the brightness, which also works. Now we jump into the Alexa app to pretty much do the same thing here. So we need to find the bulbs, make sure they have the correct name and we need to create a group for the bulbs. To do this, we select devices and then we select lights and find the first bulb. We use the same strategy here by naming that, copying the text and then pasting that with a change number for the remaining bulbs. And again, we need to create a room here, or group in the Alexa universe, and select the bulbs that are included in this group. And then we save. Now we can test it out by using the controls within the app and we can also try using the voice assistant. Alexa, turn off the master bathroom light. Okay. Alexa, turn on the master bathroom light. Right, so that works. Moving okay. on to the home kit, we are then a little bit easier here because we only pretty much need to remove them from the favorites section and just need to make sure that the name is correct. One thing that is smart by in this universe is that the name corresponds to the, if that corresponds to a room, it will automatically be put in that room. So it's pretty easy to do this. And again, we can test out the voice part also here. And last but not least, we go into the Google Home app, find our new lights group, make sure it has the correct name. And we have a toggle here to control the light, both on and off, and to control the intensity of the light. So installing the dimmer switch is pretty easy. Uh, you really have two options here because what you can do and the easiest of the, of the options is just to have this as an additional control of the bulbs that you install. Because you will have your traditional physical switch that will control the, the power to the, to the bulbs. But what I have done in my case is the other route which is to sort of remove the original switch and uh, yeah, simply put short circuit uh, so they have permanent power. And then I use this to control the, the light, but not by removing the power when I want to turn them off, just by using the software way of, of uh, turning them off. And the advantages of this is that if you, like me, have a lot of sensors or want to do different automations and stuff like that, you really don't want to have uh, the ability to turn the bulbs off and have someone do that by accident and then the stuff that you built in the automations and stuff like that, that will not work because again, someone took the power away from the bulbs. So I prefer to have them on constant power, but when you're doing so, you really need to be careful because this part of the installation is something that you should only do if you know what you're doing or Preferably also have an electrician make sure that the installation that you do is done by yeah it's done by an electrician or that they verify that the installation that you've done is safe because again once something has permanent power you need to make sure you know that the wires are tucked in safely and and can't you know touch something else that would cause problems so again be careful about this part if you're not familiar with uh, those types of installations let's see the installation of this. First, we need to unbox the dimming switch. And then we need to remove this small piece of plastic 
that make sure that the battery is connected and has power to the dimming switch. We go into our Felix Hue app under settings and say we want to add a new dimming switch. It then starts a search process. It can take a few seconds before your dimming switch start blinking, which is a sign that it is searching. And here you can see that it is now connected. Now we can select up to five scenes that the on switch will cycle through when you press it. And after this, we name it. And we can test it out. Again, by pressing the power button multiple times, we cycle through the different scenes that we have selected in the app. We can use the two other buttons to decrease or increase the intensity of the light. Okay, so now for the physical installation part. First, let me make sure the wires are nicely tucked in so that they in no way are in contact with the dimming switch. You really have two options here for mounting. You can either mount it directly into the wall by using these two screw holes that are on each side, like shown like this. Or you can take the easy route like I did, which is just to use the adhesive tape that are pre-mounted on the back plate. So if you just make sure you have that aligned, and just press it firmly against the wall for a couple of seconds, it should stick nicely. The backplate has two magnets so that the dimming switch sort of snaps right into place. Okay, bulb installed, dimming switch installed. Job well done. The whole installation with all the bulbs and the dimming switch took me around 20 minutes to install. So again, fairly easy to do so, and, and uh, honestly, a lot of that time was spent walking back and forth between uh, the bathroom and the switch box, uh, where I had to make sure you know that the power was off when I was uh, testing some of this stuff out. So uh, with a, a helper, you know, that I could probably have done it in uh, 10 minutes or so. But yeah, so fairly easy to do, and everyone can pretty much do this, especially if you skip the part about. Uh, replacing the existing switch, but just use this dimming switch as an additional way of controlling your lights. The lights that we have before were also from Philips, just, uh, you know, the regular non-smart bulbs. And I think the, the Hue edition of that, this bulb is, has a better light, it's, uh, it's brighter, and it's, uh, I think the, the Hue of it is, uh, the ambience is, uh, is better than what the original old dumb bulb had. The only thing uh, that I would say is how, how much I like, you know, that there's a little more intensity to this light than the old bulbs. The, the old bulbs could actually be turned down more than this bulb can. So if you want a very low light scene, these bulbs are not really perfect for that. Let me show you what I'm talking about, you know, with what the minimum light is and the maximum intensity that you can get out of this bulb. So this is the max intensity of the light. And as you can see here, I will start dimming it. And this is the lowest that the lights will go. And again, just increasing it back to maximum. So my workaround for this problem, if you will, is to make a custom night scene, uh, because this is really where the problem is when you want to just brush your teeth or you know, you're using the bathroom at night and you don't want that much light in the room because you don't want to wake up too much. Uh, and at that uh, situation, you know, the only way I could solve this was to make a custom scene where only some of the lights in the room were turned on. So let me just show you how I did that. So to do this, we select the group that we created earlier on. Here we can see the scenes that are in this room and as you can see I've already created this scene I've called night. So you see a 7 here because I have 7 bulbs in this room and here I can select the individual bulbs and say that they, some of them should be turned off and some of them should be turned on in this specific scene. So by saving the scene, I can go back into the configuration for my dimming switch and I, I then select that the second cycle will be my custom night scene. 
So I only have three out of seven bulbs turned on in that scene. And this gives me a much lower intensity of light in that compared to this. I hope you found this useful. This should be pretty easy for everyone to, uh, to mimic if you want to do the same in your house. So let's just talk about prices. So these uh, come in different uh, sort of packs. This is the two pack, which cost, uh, let me just check here, 24 British pounds. So, I'm, so to, to the best of my knowledge, uh, US doesn't use the GO10 um, bulb type. So I couldn't find a price on Amazon.com for this, but 24 British pounds for the two pack and 18 pounds uh, for just one. It also comes in a white ambience version where, so this uh, pretty much uh, you can't control the, let's say the warmth of the light. Uh, you can only control how the, yeah, dimmed it wants, uh, you, you need it to be. Whereas the white ambience, you have a little bit more uh, room to play with the the yeah the warmth of the light, and that version uh, actually in the, on Amazon.uk is pretty similar to uh, to the white version white white version. So you 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 should probably go with that if uh, if you can't find that in Denmark. You know there's actually a, a, a quite a bit of price difference between the white and the white ambience version. But if you can find the white ambience version to uh, the similar price, you know, you should pretty much go with that. So uh, the dimming switch is also uh, around 14 British pound, um, which is fairly cheap, I think, and something that I would recommend it, uh, definitely for. And this is since this is battery powered, you know, you can put this anywhere. So you aren't uh, limited to where the physical outlet is. So, so again, it, it really makes sense if you want to to uh, yeah, make uh, your lights more accessible. And of course, uh, voice assistance could also be something that you could look into here once you've gone down the smart light road. The only thing I will say here is uh, the obvious add-on that you could uh, consider if you, like me, are installing this in a bathroom would be a motion sensor. So instead of having uh, this to activate the, the light, it would just automatically be turned on uh, when some, someone enters the room. And then you can set a timer for when uh, motion hasn't been detected for 10 minutes or so, it would automatically turn off. So uh, the only problem, if you like me have <laughs> women in your household, will be, so how long does the light have to be turned on to make sure that if someone is taking a bath, you know, that the light uh, automatically doesn't turn off after 10 minutes? because the motion sensor will typically not be able to uh, cover the, the shower. So, uh, you know, yeah, I'll leave that up to you guys to settle that discussion. You know, I have my own problems here with, uh, with that. Uh, hope you found this useful. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll see you guys in another video. Bye.